Hey guys, Dan for World of Mr. Grey, Dan Dalf the Grey. We are finally going to cover Ghost Files. Cue the overly dramatic intro! This is a breakdown analysis of the Waverly Hills episode one of Ghost Files from the Watcher. For those who don't know, Watcher is the uh, well, it's not. I was going to say continuation. It's not a continuation. It's Ryan uh, Begara and Shane Madey. Those two were on BuzzFeed and Salt, and they did ghost investigations. But Shane Madey is an ardent skeptic. Ryan Begara is a full-blown believer. I've been a fan of them for a couple of years now. I've really enjoyed their uh, ghost investigations because. In my eyes, they don't sort of sensationalize anything. They don't add anything. But they they left BuzzFeed and Solved, and then they went to and they created their own channel called The Watcher, which I've been enjoying. But they've recently started back up paranormal investigations, and I've been wanting to do a breakdown on them since they started doing them again. But I was worried about maybe getting copyrighted, so I don't know. And you know, Ryan or Shane, if you ever see this on the off little tiny chance you ever see this, see this. I'm big fans, I really enjoy your stuff, so please don't copyright me. <laughs> I'm not going to watch the entire episode now. I've, I've seen it a couple of times, and there's a couple of moments I wanna, I'm want i going to be covering. But if you haven't seen it yet, stop watching this video right now. I've linked it down below. Go there, watch, like, like and subscribe, and then come back and we'll see what we can see. For those new here, this isn't a debunking. There is some soft debunking stuff on the fly, but this is mainly like to go over some of the stuff we might have seen in this episode and, and other stuff. I do other stuff as well, but like just try and explain what it is. But anyway, let's go. Row, row, row. I said that song med after editing that bloody video. But anyway, we're not going to watch the entire hour of this video. I'm just going to go to certain points in the video and some of the stuff they found. <laughs> we'll go over. Now this first point where they're going to go over is a viewer submitted to them, not to me, uh, EVP uh, from Deanna and Mark Erskine. And we're going to listen to the EVP first and then we'll see what happens. One of the things that I submitted was an EVP actually captured from my husband Mark. While our friends were posted up in the lobby, I decided to do my solo investigation in the morgue. I laid down on the body rack with my EVP recorder and proceeded to ask questions for the next 10 minutes or so. It wasn't until the following... Now, oh, they keep getting complaints, you can't hear the audio, so... ...the day when reviewing our evidence that we discovered what seems to be the sound of a woman humming. Look at us tools! I gotta play uh, my little EVP machine here. Did you hear it? So they get a hum. This viewer submitted that EVP is like a... That kind of hum. And it's in the morgue, which Ryan and Shane are going to be in right now. And they hear something. So obviously Deanna sent us an EVP of a lady humming in here. Yeah. Let's see if we could get that to happen again. <laughs> Take it away. Are you hearing that? Yeah, a little bit. Are you hearing that? The hair on the back of my fucking neck is standing up. Oh, it could have well been a, a car outside somewhere, but it did sound like a sort of a low tone somewhere in the building. Now, what it sounds like to me, the EVP which they got from the submitted viewer sounded pretty much identical to that one. I first thought that it could have been like um, one of the crew, not deliberately doing it, but just Whatever, because you, you'd be surprised when you're standing in it somewhere or just you're concentrating on something, your bodily sounds, which you make, unintentionally make. It has happened, unfortunately. But this particular one, and like, we'll never know because we're not bloody there. This particular one, like Shane says, it does sound like a cargo, um, like in a road, not too far in the distance. This is at night, so sound travels better at night because there's not so much of the daytime... Uh, um, sounds going so this on google earth is waverly hills i think is it oh no this sorry this there's waverly hills okay so that's the entire there's a hundred bedrooms in that entire sanatorium uh there's the road going up to it 
But there's also roads, there's like a, I think that, well, I'm assuming they're houses. Oops, wrong one. Yeah, so you've got houses there as well, not too far away from it, you know, through the forest. It's not that far away. There's roads there. And there's also, if you notice, a main, we call them dual carriageway over here, over here. I don't know if that's the highway, I have no idea, but we call them dual carriageways. But right there, which is not, if you can see, it's not too far from the sanatorium right there. There's going to be constant traffic going through, you know, 24 hours, I assume. And there's a road up just by me, up um, not far from me, up there, right by the mountain. When you, at night, when you hear cars go over a certain piece of the road, it literally sounds like, mm -hmm. that's what it sounds like. So I'm going to say, like I said, we wouldn't know for sure because we're not there. But I'm going to say that is cars passing in the not too, too distant road just outside the sanatorium. But who knows? So moving on. Why don't we move to the spirit? The I, I'm still pretty convinced that it's just cars on the road, out, not directly outside, but not too far away. And the reason why the hum is so prominent in this video is because they bumped the sound up themselves. You know, that's obviously they want people at home to try and hear this hum, so they bumped the sound up themselves. That's why it sounds so prominent, but I'm, I'm assuming if you were standing right in that room, it would sound like it's almost coming, say, from it, for example, from another part of the building, because obviously the Waverly, uh, Waverly Hills Sanatorium, it's pretty much open. A lot, a lot of the windows are either smashed in or taken out. Some of them are covered by like tarp or black bags, but most of it is completely in open air, and you know, it sound travels in that kind of thing. So I th I'm assuming if you were in that room, and because apparently this humming only happens in that room, or like when you're in that room. And it usually sounds like it's distant in another part of the building. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's that little dual carriageway just off the road, and it's cars passing, hitting a certain part of the road. But who knows? So moving on. This is the perfect place to test my new Spirit Box amplification system. Oh. Word on the street is it's called the Honey Tone. Right now, first of all, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Spirit Box. I just, it's just a radio scanner basically, where it scans like. Countless multiple channels at a time and the theory with the spirit box is that If you get like a sentence come through it must mean it's from a ghost Because it's saying that sentence over numerous channels in like a like a matter of a split second I still think it just spouts bollocks myself <laughs> No matter I've, I've watched so many videos about on it. I've been investigations with people who've had spirit boxes and to me, it's literally just spouting in little snippets of the radio stations in the local area, or even like if it's on the um, long wave frequency, where long wave frequency radio, it bounces off the ionosphere, the atmosphere, I should say, and back down to earth. That's how you get long wave radio. When it comes to the spirit boxes, they're just picking up radio frequencies of local stations and international stations. I can't remember ever seeing anything of any video of any kind or, or being in the presence of one I, I can't see anything where it forms proper sentences it's just always garbled mess or like a, a half a word and then people interpret it what they think they they think it says and the honey tone box which Ryan Bagara pulls out it's just a guitar amplifier it's not like um, Huff Paranormal's wonder box or shit box I like to call them it's just a simple guitar amplifier which has some noise suppression on it you can pick them up for like 30 quid. And the honey tone filters out the noise while amplifying only the voices. See that honey tone right there is that exact one right there. And if you go down to the reviews, cause I'm gonna read this reviews cause it's uh, up. One of the reviews says, the amp, it's a good amp, it's a good, like I said, it's a guitar amp, but one of the reviews say, the amp is massively let down by its powering options. If you use the battery, it starts to crap out at a certain volume. The reason I say that for the next part we're about to see. Yes. Cheers. Yeah. Now watch. Oh. I like anything that... I mean, it does help massively with spirit boxes because I, I can't stand the sound of constant scanning white noise. It's really annoying. As, you know, as someone who uh, myself suffers with tinnitus for the last 20 odd years, listening to something scanning white noise is really annoying. Really annoying. But I digress. It makes the spirit box quiet. My name is Ryan, this is Shane. Could you say either of our names back to us if you want to communicate? 
the, the power bank turned off. Oh shit. The ghosts fried it. They fried my machine. My ghost machine. Say morgue. That actually kind of sounded like the morgue, I'm not gonna lie. Ryan, who's, like I said, is the true believer in this uh, in this duo. He thinks it sounds like the Moog. I generally cannot hear anything that that word supposedly says. And I can guarantee I've I've gone over this countless times in this channel. Where if you if you watch like a video with someone who's putting up an EVP, if you watch it in if you watch it with with your eyes closed, and you try and think what that word is, I guarantee I'm pretty certain you will get that word wrong to what they put up on screen. But once they put up that word on screen, you will constantly think, oh yeah, it does actually say that. That's the way these uh, EVPs work, unfortunately. If you're there, it might sound like something different. But if you if if someone puts the word up of what they th interpret it to, th uh, to say, you are going to hear that word being said by the spirit box. That's the way our brains work, unfortunately. Now the next part we're gonna go over is a submitted viewer photograph of a supposed ghost they took a photo when they were do going around walking in investigations. So we're gonna have a look. We were walking around on the second floor when I got serious chills. Like the hair was standing up on my arms. My mom and I had been taking pictures the entire evening and it wasn't until later I was showing them to my friends and one of them was like, hey, um, what's that? So when we brightened up the picture, I was totally freaked out with what we saw. Is this the face of a former patient on the sun point. <laughs> now one thing I will say about this, as you can tell, the photograph is pretty much black and white. So I think I'm gonna get this is a guess I wasn't there, but they they were taking photographs in infrared. With an infrared camera basically, like uh like an SLS camera maybe or what's it called? The other one I can't remember the name of it. You're in this room, which is surrounded by windows. I'm not talking about Ryan and Shane, I'm talking about the woman who sent in the photo. They're in this room. They likely had like phones, cameras um, all kinds of electrical equipment on them because they went there for a paranormal investigation. So I'm going to say it was a reflection in the window of either either an IR sensor they had or like on their phones or camera, whatever, or whichever equipment. Um, they might not be able to see with the naked eye, but if you, if you look at it through infrared, you will see lights everywhere when it comes to like electrical equipment. Um, it's the same reason you can see when you pick up a TV remote, when you push it, you can't see it, but when you look at the camera, you push it, you see the red infrared beam or band come out to the TV remote. It's the same way with that. So it's probably just a reflection of an electrical equipment they had on their, on their person at the time or the actual camera itself they were taking it with. So. Not up here, so let's see. Oop. Was that a fart? No, that was a fucking noise. <laughs> that was a Farts are terrifying. Moving on. <laughs> The REM pod. Wow, I'm so glad you asked. The REM pod creates its own circular electromagnetic field and will alarm when anything penetrates that field. I've been on an investigation with a group who had who had the, the exact REM pod, right? They would they would they set it down like as they fair play to them, they made sure there's no electrical equipment around. There's sockets in the building, mind, and obviously there's wiring through the walls. Now I'm assuming there's no wiring in Waverly Hills. I mean, it might be. Well, no, actually, no. There, there is actually. I think about it because you could see uh, emergency exit signs in the hallways and various videos throughout Waverly Hill. So we know there's wiring through the. But the REM pod, it. I mean, technically, it does what it's supposed to do. Basically, it um, detects EMF, and like obviously, if you go near it, it'll start like breaking this little EMF field they got around the REM pod. But again, the other problem with that is that there's EMF all around you. No matter where you are, there's there's EMF bouncing off the Earth's atmosphere constantly, and it fluctuates throughout the day. It's, you can't really go on that, on a REM pod as evidence of something contacting you. You just can't. And the REM pod, like a lot of these devices, are created by ghost hunters. So they're a bit, if you ask me, it's a bit biased, those uh, devices are. <laughs> Uh, this is why I always go to who decided that that is how you communicate with ghosts. If that is indeed what it is, but anyway. The REM pod also detects temperature fluctuations. So about, ooh, I'm getting pretty close. And uh, again, going on the temperature fluctuations uh, part of it, uh, when I was with this team who had the REM pod, 
it was going nuts. The lights were flashing. They were like, they were coming on for temperature. They're coming off for temperature. They're going on off. They were going, it was going nuts whether you were close to it or not. And I later found out it's because the batteries were dying in it. So there's that you gotta take into consideration as well when you're using a REM pod. The device I'm holding in my hand is an SLS cam. The SLS cam uses a grid of infrared light to recognize human-like objects in front of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I have made many videos on the SLS Kinect camera. Um, one of the videos I made almost two years ago, which I still get a lot of shit for, which is fine. <laughs> but the SLS camera, for those who don't know, is structured light sensor. I think that's what it stands for. I'm sure they just showed it actually. But it's basically a, a Kinect camera, uh, reconfigured to work, for, you know, with like screens and for PC or for just for portable reasons. I made a video a while back saying why you shouldn't use an SLS camera on your ghost hunting uh, investigations because it's not designed to move about. People always take them about and they're always moving it about and whatever. I said it's not designed to move about. It needs to be in a fixed position to be able to work correctly with the software, which is inside this connect and i keep getting the comments saying oh so it's okay to go ghost hunting in this fixed position no it's still not i you know it's still not doing what you think it's doing it's simply throwing out a load of laser beams and measuring the depth of where it is the room it's in the the thing which is in front of it uh, but the software which it uses even on the newest ones is is not it's not 100 percent it'll still detect like patterns like if I had a connect now pointing that way, it would be t detecting like uh, probably that mantelpiece area as a uh, shoulders and collarbone. Probably be detecting him as a head, obviously. It you know it, that's the problem with the SLS. It detects things which it thinks looks like a humanoid, but it's simply just detecting patterns. Obviously, if I was in front of it, it'd be detecting my body, but it's it's still just detecting patterns it's not 100 percent unfortunately and don't come at me in the comments about really haunt you should check out really haunted's as uh, connect stuff trust me i've made videos on him many times over the last couple of years it's pointless moving on but in this particular episode they don't actually see anything other than shane's skeletal figure in the connect so we're going to move on from that shafters i was just snapping photos with my phone i didn't notice it at the time but um went back afterwards and was having a look through and this was the one that had the cleanest detail is this possibly the apparition of the ill-fated man who fell down the elevator shaft now this particular picture this is another viewer submitted photo to them and apparently the circle, you know, what's being circled right there is, in, is like a supposed apparition. It just looks like a blurry garbled mess to me. It looks like they were taking photos. You know, they were probably like, bump, 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 bump. The, the photo, or the, this particular photo, is clearly in motion because nothing is in focus whatsoever. And that's going to happen. That's called artifacting when you, you know, even on the high grade cameras, photographic like um, DSLRs or even SLRs, if you're moving when you're taking a photo, you're going to get that. You're going to get that. Uh, what exactly it shows, but there is like, I'm not saying you're going to get like that shape. It, like any one of these shapes will just be a moldy, blurry mess. Photographic cameras are not designed to be taken in motion. That's why when you when you're taking photos, you know, taking selfies out with your friends at a nightclub sometime, and you're like, like that, you'll take about twenty photos probably. Two of them will probably be good because you obviously you're moving your arm when you're taking these photos, and it's the same thing with this. They're taking a photo; it's it's just in motion, so you can't really see anything. And in dark areas or inside dimly lit areas, I should say, when you're taking photos. The camera, no matter how good it is, if you haven't got a light source pointing at something, or if you don't use, don't use the flash, by the way, flash always ruins things. But if you haven't got like a some sort of light source looking at the area you're photographing in a dimly lit area, the CMOS sensor is going to try and interpret what it thinks it's looking at, and that's why you get a wobbly, gobbly mess. I'm no expert on photographs, by the way. It's just my knowledge over the years of having owning cameras and DSLRs and SLRs. So, but I'm not an expert. I'm an expert in nothing. Walk up to that thing and touch the bone, guy. <laughs> we have another way to maybe communicate with 
What is this other way? We're gonna do something called the Estes method or Estes method. Instead of using a speaker system for this spirit box, I'm gonna be the speaker. So I'm gonna put headphones on that are noise canceling and I'm going to say whatever I think the spirit box is saying. Meanwhile, you're gonna be asking questions that I can't hear. Oh. And if you hear a response that's compelling, pretty good. Now, the first thing I will say is that I'd never heard of this Estes method before until I watched this episode and I had to look it up what it was. And basically, like they say in the episode, someone puts noise canceling headphones, which by the way, I have the exact same headphones that Ryan got on right there. They're Sony ones. Uh, they're pretty cheap. They're really good, but they are not noise cancelling. As far as I'm aware, they're not noise cancelling, but they are good. But the, the Estes method is basically is using the spirit box, but someone listens to it and just spouts out word. But the again, the problem with that uh, method, I suppose, is the person having the headphones on, again, you're just going on their interpretation of what they think they're hearing, and they spout the words out. But, yeah. I'm talking to the spirits now. And you can use my little buddy over there as a antenna. What's your name? Incredible. Bit cocky. What are you doing? Scare me. Scare you? You're a ghost. You should be scaring me. Typically how it works. Do it. Okay. Okay. Uh so yeah, and this goes on for the next couple of minutes. And like I said, it's just down to the interpretation of the person listening to the spirit box and what they think the words are saying. So you can't really go on that. You hear that? He wants to believe. I do want to believe. Open I want to believe too. And then shove him right through. <laughs> On our way to the next room, this happened. This is the third floor right here. What was that noise? I don't know what that could have been. I mean, it sounded like something potentially fell on this metal grate. In this one, they, they think, they hear what something like, something sounds like, which something fall into the metal grate below. Now, as someone who used to do a lot of urban exploring, I went to some decrepit, dark, crumbling places, and you would hear noises when you're walking around, you hear noises because you're disturbing some like old decayed steps, paint, wood, anything. It's all crumbling. A lot of these buildings are really old and you know, they, they're not maintained. Same with this Waverly Hills uh, sanatorium place. Is it's completely crumbling. This I know there's like they do ghost tours there and there's like caretakers there, but it's not maintained in the sense of like today a hospital would be today. It's completely decayed. It's you know it's crumbling. It's parts of it is falling down. The paint is falling off the walls. The paint is coming away from underneath the steps. And I just think as they were walking up, they just dislodged a bit. And when they go back to uh, to test it, obviously nothing happens. But it's probably because that little decayed piece of rubble, which fell off, had already fallen off. So there's not a lot to say about that, really. We're taking pictures throughout the whole tour, and we took this photo in the sunroom. During the picture taking, we didn't really notice anything, like any noises, but we did notice it later when we were looking at the pictures the next day. And once again, this is another viewer submitted photograph uh, to the watcher, watcher files. And apparently, that's supposed to be an apparition of a ghost boy or something. I don't know. But again, look at look at the graininess of the photo. There is a light source in this one. But again, what I also can see as well from this, because due to the graininess, it's got a really low ISO setting. Yeah, the ISO setting is not quite correct or is just not working good enough to be able to take photos in such a dimly lit area. Even though the flash was there, the, f the viewfinder still has to find before the flash goes off to, s to try and take a photo. I also think they zoomed in as well. I don't think they'd done it in post. I think they zoomed in with the camera and then took the photo, which again, if you zoom in with the camera, you're gonna get that kind of grainy artifact in. Um, I just think the cube, of the doorway there is probably decayed paint right there and on the doorway there's probably decay i don't think that door is there now but i think there's probably decay or paint on the doorway and it just coincides with each other and the the, the camera with taking the photo because like i said it needs it needs the proper light to be able to co correlate the information it's looking at to give you a decent picture but in this case because of the dim lights 
Uh, it just melds the dark shadows and black and browns the paint into one. So we can as work, people. <laughs> yeah, I think we ought to. Why don't you go by yourself? Huh? Timmy? Huh? You heard that, right? I did. Now that click, for, if you listen to it in headphones, that click sounds like it's right by them but they look down the hallway. Unfortunately, I don't know which microphone because I think they have a microphone down the hallway or like a camera down the hallway because you see a light down there a few times throughout the episode. But I don't know which microphone picked that click up or it sounded like something dropping or whatever or maybe a shuffling of the foot. It could have been them because in, in this episode, like I said, it sounds like it's right by them, but they look down the hallway. So I don't know about this one. So we're moving on. Later in the night, our stuffed bear device programmed to ask pre-recorded questions got this response in the Timmy Hall. Can you finish this? Unfortunately with that, we don't know what time that was recorded. And again, if you listen through headphones, the knocking after the teddy bear knocking sounds like it's Somewhere else in the building, but obviously because the sound is ramped up, it sounds a tiny bit louder. But it could have been like security walking around. It couldn't be the crew walking around because, you know, even though there's Shane, Madea and Ryan Bagara there, there's like about six or seven people with them, like ADs, directors, photographers, sound engineers. So there's a lot of people there, even though they're walking around trying, you know, I'm sure they're trying their best to be quiet when recording, but... You don't know when that was recorded. We don't know when that teddy bear one was recorded, unfortunately. So it could have been anyone walking around in some of the other rooms or even downstairs. Because like I said, this Waverly Hills is pretty open with windows and what have you. So, yeah. On the fifth floor, while the tour guide was explaining all about Notorious Room 502, I was feeling something strange in Room 504. So I took a series of photos from the doorway, and the next morning, I was pretty shocked to find this unexplained shape. Could this ghostly child be Bobby or Timmy? Now, this particular photo is, obviously, it was taken in the day or at least sort of like dusk or dawn. One of them, and it shows like a figure, which is obviously circled. But this to me is is basically, it looks like I said, I'm going on my camera knowledge here. The light outside is obviously overexposing the camera. And anything in that room is obviously, as you can see, pretty dark apart from that part, because cause it's shining the light off the outside. But that right there is something really close to the camera. Now before this, I did make some examples, which I'm hopefully showing you right here with my own camera right there. This is me. Putting something in front of really close to the lens. Is it a ghost? What is it? I pointed it at the window right there. Obviously it overexposed the camera and I put little things right close up to it. Which, where was it? It was actually that. It's a grape. I was eating grapes at the time. <laughs> and when you put it like really close like that, obviously it loses all form, but you can still see, look, it almost looks like a shadow. And that's what happens when you, when your camera is focusing on, when the focal point of the camera is like say 10, 15 feet in front of you. If you put something right up close to the lens and you haven't got autofocus playing, that's the effect you get. And that's a lot, a lot of these ghost photos when it's like a shadow in the picture or something. Nine times out of 10, I'm not saying every time it may be something else, but nine times out of 10, it's just something really close to the lens like so. It's just a focal point error. So it could have been, in this particular photo, it could have been, it could have been anything. It could have moved the hands, it could have been a camera strap, it could have been anything really close to the lens, like so. So who knows? But like, like I said, we're not there, so who knows? My parents were down there and they had an EMF meter that was lighting up like crazy. So my dad started recording while my mom started asking questions. They didn't hear anything at the time except for some loud clanging in the background. But when they played it back later, we could hear some super clear voices. You ready for this? I'm very ready. Are you happy that we're here? Talk to us again. I would love for you to make this light up again. It's 
pretty fucking good. There's actually another EVP clip there. Keeping your legs up to It's lighting up there. Is there someone that wants to speak to us? Oh, yes. Can you make a noise? Can you try really hard to make a noise? When I was watching this uh, a couple of weeks back when it first released and this part played, Shane's face right there is exactly the face I was making as I was listening to it. He is dying to say, what a load of bollocks. He's dying to say it right there because that's exactly what I said. Now we weren't there, who knows, but to me it's just, it just sounds like the people asking the questions are the ones going, get out. They're just doing it, you know, I think it's them. We'll never know for sure. But Shane is thinking the exact same thing that a lot of us were thinking with that particular EVP played in that episode. He is dying to call bollocks right there, but I think he's just being kind in this particular episode because, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ovulus takes environmental readings that spirits are said to manipulate, such as temperature or electromagnetic fields, and converts them Interrupt. into corresponding words New moon. or phonetic sounds. I have a big problem with the Ovulus. I think I've covered it countless times in my videos and like, and like they just said there it just it supposedly takes emf and temperature changes and converts her into words and this is how the ghost speaker getting out the thing i always go to with this one how do they know i'm not talking about them but how do the people who would use this office how do they know that is exactly how that device is supposed to work how do they know and two it's a device, once again, made by Ghost Hunters. So it's, that device is going to be a bit biased. It's pretty much on the same level as the Necrophonic and the Ghost Tube, where it spouts out words. And it's basically an algorithm. Now, I, I don't know that for sure, but I, I'm willing to bet if there were some programmers out there who took the source code for those devices and looked into it, I guarantee it'd just be an, an algorithm which just randomly spouts out words. In fact, I put money on it. And the words in these sound banks are never like normal words. You won't find the likes of bread or Facebook or coffee. You'll never find those words in these sound banks. But what you will find in them is demon, uh, pentagram, run, hot, cold, fear. You'll find all the kind of words which provokes an eerie response when you hear them. You know, if you're in a dark supposedly haunted tunnel and you got this device going and the tunnel and the, the, the ovulus says run doesn't say it like that but you know what i mean you're gonna think shit does that mean i should run from this ghost or does it mean this ghost is running towards me so but again if you were in the dark supposedly haunted tunnel and this ovulus device said cookies you wouldn't think hmm, that's scary you think hmm, now i want some cookies so that's why this sound <laughs> these sound banks on the ne necrophonic Ghost Tube and the Ovilus, they only have a specific uh, so, uh, so, uh, bank of words to sort of provoke an eerie response. Am I 100% on that? No, I'm not, but you work it out. <laughs> Before we get to the final one, I just realized I accidentally skipped another su viewer submitted photo, so we're gonna have a quick look at that now. Oh yeah, she chilling. I was in the fifth floor at Waverly and we had gone into room 502. My chest felt very weird and tight in there and a lot of my friends shared that same sensation. And we went into the room next to room 502 and I took a picture like going through the doorway out into the hall and I didn't see until we got home, but I had captured a figure standing where the nurse had allegedly hung herself. Now this particular one, I, I genuinely don't know. She did say she's there, she was there with her friends, and so it's like probably a, a couple of people there. So it could have been someone in the darkness just walking past the, the, the doorway as she took the photo. She didn't take it with a flash, as you can see. I mean, it does genuinely look like it's a figure in the doorway, but unfortunately, we don't know what was in the background there at the time, and we don't know the circumstances. I, so I genuinely don't know about this. I'm not saying it's a ghost or a ghost photograph. I am not saying that absolutely not one bit. But at this moment in time, I just don't know. So moving on. Now this one, I have no idea why they added this in. I, I don't think they added it in for the fun or the lulls. But this was supposedly behind Shane Madey's back as he was going on his solo investigation near the end of the episode. And Sh Shane said that he thinks he saw someone up there. Now, anyone watching and anyone who knows what he's like in his videos, he was clearly taking the piss. 
he was clearly taking the piss because that's what he does. He takes the piss, says he sees something just to wind Ryan Bagara up before he goes on his own solo investigation. But that right there, I mean, to me, it's the whole, the part he's in walking around, it's just windows, it's, all the doorways are open and the windows to the outside are all uncovered. Most of them are uncovered, some are covered. Most of them are uncovered, so you can see the out outdoor atmospheric lights. That just looks like one of the windows to me. I don't know why they added that. That simply just looks like one of the windows. But who am I to say? <laughs> that was Waverly Hills Ghost Files from the Watcher, Watcher series. And I've been wanting to do that breakdown for a while. I really enjoyed. What do you think? Do you think I'm full of shit? Do you think I'm a bit too critique in my uh, explanations? Or do you think it's just all opinions? But I really enjoyed that. And... I'm hoping to cover the rest of the stuff. Let me know if you want to see me cover more of the Watcher stuff. Uh, Ghost Files in particular. Because I'm, I'm big fans of theirs. I really enjoy this stuff. Because out of the um, the clump of paranormal on YouTube, it's, it's them and like maybe two other channels, three other channels, which I think are genuinely just, one, having fun, and two, they don't add stuff. I genuinely just don't think they, these two added anything because they have a reputation to uphold. I really enjoyed it. And that was my breakdown analysis. It was probably a long one, actually, but uh, it was a long episode. And if Ray Ryan or Shane, if you ever see this, off the off chance you might see this somewhere in the distance, I enjoy your show. Please don't copyright me. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you like this video. Leave a sub if you're new to my channel. I do this quite often. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and bye for now. I don't know what I'm doing with my eyes all of a sudden.